Hello everyone in this is Bio Phoenix here. It feels like I haven't done one in a while, but well, we're back. And today I'm going to be talking about a game on the Sharp 68000. A computer system that I don't think gets talked about enough. In fact, I only covered one game on the system before, and that was Star Princess, or should I say, uh, Etoli Princess, because, you know, I'm not good with French. Well, anyways, today we're going to be talking about a game that also has a name that's kind of hard to say, and that is Aqualis. Yeah, Aqualis. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. So the game came out in 1991, and it was developed and published by Exact. Yeah, the same people that made Star Princess. And it's a side-scrolling action platformer with a mech. So yeah, this has everything I love written all over it. But we shall see if it lives up to that. So first, as always, let's talk about the game's story. The game takes place in the year 2069. <laughs> uh, yeah. You definitely knew someone was thinking about something. Well anyways, apparently there was a British ship that was on a private investigation mission where it traveled to a mysterious island, and then, out of nowhere, it goes missing. So then they have to send out an American mecha pilot named Frederick Von Nuyuya. Not really the most American sounding name I ever heard, but I mean, hey, at least it's more memorable than naming him John Smith. So yeah, that's the gist of what this story is all about. Now, if you were able to read the cutscenes in this game, you would actually know that there is a lot more in-depthness to this plot than what I just explained here. Like, it talks a lot about, like, the ocean with, like, the polar ice caps and the, the ozone layer, so, you know, it talks about a lot of global warming stuff. And one thing I did read about online, although there wasn't a lot of information that mentioned this, but I figured I'd mention it because it is pretty interesting nonetheless, but apparently the writer for this game originally wanted to make this story into a manga series, but they instead made it into a video game. Now, like I said, I can't confirm this being 100% true or not, but it was still interesting to read about. So that's all I have to say about the story. So now let's get moving on to the gameplay. So as I already said, it's a side-scrolling action action platformer that is pretty linear, but of course there is some secret stuff you can find throughout the level, but I wouldn't classify it as a Metroid style game. But this game has a lot of different weapons you get to pick from, like there's many different melee weapons, many different projectile weapons, and you also get a grappling hook which can help you get across certain platforms, very similar to Bionic Commando. And the chests that you find scattered throughout the level can not only give you these weapons, but they can also give you some health and even a bomb that can explode everything on screen that can only be used once. And one interesting aspect that I was not expecting this game to have is that this game does have a leveling up feature where that every time you kill something, you get EXP for it. And when you level up, your maximum health bar will expand. So it's a good way for you to try and fight some of these enemies rather than try avoiding them all the time. And as you would expect, at the end of each stage, you gotta fight a boss. And then you just gotta get to the next stage and you can actually save your game in this game. Which is very nice of them to do because you don't gotta worry about trying to complete the game in one sitting. Not like the game is that long or anything, it only has eight stages, but I still very much appreciate it. So now let's get moving on to the game's controls, and the controls in this game are actually quite good. Now one thing I have to mention when it comes to these uh, Sharp 68000 games from before, I actually did get my controller to work with it now, where before when I played uh, Star Princess I couldn't get it to work, but now I have, which is great. So as you would expect, the basic controls are not confusing at all, you just move around the d-pad, you have two buttons to jump and attack, you know the usual stuff, but it's nice to know that in this game you can actually shoot and attack in multiple directions. And pressing the jump button while in the air allows you to use the uh, grappling hook. And of course, if you use it in like a corner, that allows you to kind of swing with it. Or if you hold up in doing it, then that allows you to just grab onto a higher ledge. And as for switching weapons in this game, this is the only complaint I have with the controls, is that I do find that switching weapons was a little bit confusing to figure out, and once you realize what you have to do, it kind of makes you wonder, why couldn't they just make that the pause button? So to switch your weapons in this game, you have to hold down and then press both the attack and jump button at the same time, and then the weapon select menu shows up. Now thankfully, it's not unresponsive, but it's just so weird. They should have just made this the pause, or just make it the select button or something, but oh well. That's the only complaint I do have with this game's controls. Everything else is actually quite good, like when it comes to the feeling of the controls, I really don't have any complaints with them that much. It doesn't feel too slow, doesn't feel sluggish. 
It doesn't have any major hit detection issues or anything like that. Honestly, I don't have any major complaints about the controls outside of the one thing that I mentioned that, yeah, maybe one thing could have been button mapped out a little bit better, but outside of this, I actually found this game controlled quite well. So now, let's get moving on to the other things, like the graphics, and holy crap. The graphics in this game are fucking great. So as you would expect me to say about a game released on a Japanese computer system, the game is very bright and colorful, lots of really nice colors and details to the backgrounds and the foregrounds, and all the enemy sprites are also very bright and colorful and have cool details to them that I really like. And your main character's mech also does look pretty cool too, even though his color scheme is a little funky, it's like olive green mixed with bright blue. Yeah, not my favorite looking color scheme for something like this, but I guess they had to use it because they needed something to stand out with the bright colorful backgrounds, but you know, that's just a minor thing. But either way, this game just looks really great. Like, look at the parallax scrolling in this game. For 1991, this was pretty damn impressive. And there's a lot of cool memorable backgrounds to look at, like this one with the sunken ship in the background. That just looks really awesome. And there's lots of other cool set pieces you get to go to too. I also really like the one that kind of looks like Aquatic Ruins from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Also, I haven't even talked about the intro cutscene to this game yet, but yeah, it looks really damn great as well. Like, lots of really cool animation going on here, and even the cutscenes in between levels are also really nicely animated as well. So yeah, overall with the graphics, as you already know, I'm just gushing all over it because it's just so damn freaking good. And now, as for the game's music, the music in this game is also uh, pretty damn good, although I don't think it's as impressive as the graphics, but it's still really good nonetheless. A lot of the music here almost sounds very hard rockin' and metal sounding, which fits a game like this, and I think it's great. In fact, there's actually one song in particular, it's a boss theme, that almost sounds like something out of Revenge of Shinobi, which is a great thing to be compared to. In fact, I would actually say that a lot of the music in this game also does sound very much like the highest quality stuff that you would hear out of a Sega Genesis. And another song that does stand out to me quite well is the fifth stage theme. It has this really eerie piano piece, which I really like, it sounds cool, but it also reminded me of something that was completely random, and that was that it reminds me of the opening theme song to the TV show Goosebumps, like the piano piece that would play throughout that intro song. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Now while all of this sounds like a top-notch OST, the only nitpick I do have to say about this OST is that there are a couple songs in this game that are very short and they do loop pretty quickly. Now thankfully it's not a 5 second loop or anything stupid, but there's a couple tracks that are like maybe 40, 50 seconds or to like a little over a minute and then it just repeats. And it makes me wish that the songs were a little bit longer, but despite that though, which like I said, it's a very minor nitpick, this is still a very good OST. I don't think I'd put it on the same level as Star Princess's OST, which I said was one of my all-time favorite uh, Shark 68000 OSTs that I've heard, but this is still a very damn good one nonetheless. Now, if you want to go out and buy yourself a copy of this game, well, good luck, because I couldn't find it. Not like I'm surprised, since it's really hard to find games released on the Sharp 68000, and if you do, they're not cheap at all. But if you do want to emulate the game, I can definitely say that yes, it is very playable, and I ran into no issues whatsoever. The only thing I will say about it is that uh, trying to switch the discs between certain levels is a little bit confusing, but you know, that's just me and my skill issue. So now, as for my overall thoughts on Aqualus, is that this game is really damn great. This is another very, very good uh, Sharp 68000 game that I can definitely recommend if you really love uh, action platformers and if you just love mecha stuff. For that I said that there's a lot of different fun weapons to mess around with, the controls are very good for the most part, the graphics are amazing, and the music is very good for the most part. And the levels never feel like they go on for too long, and you do get some checkpoints too. And as for the only complaints I have with this game, well, I already talked about saying that they should have had the pause button be the uh, weapon switching, but outside of that, the only other thing I can mention that I haven't mentioned yet is that I do feel like in the later stages, some of the random enemies that you'll come across, a lot of them take a lot of hits. Even when you get the strongest beam sword in the game, it still feels like it takes a lot of hits on certain enemies, which is really weird, because the first time you get that weapon, it's like not that much better than what you're using before. But 
outside of this one thing though and the other thing that i keep mentioning yeah those are really my own two complaints with this game outside of that it's actually a really damn good game and also i'd say that even the difficulty in this game is also very fair as well like i'd say stage six and onward is where i feel like the game gets pretty tough but even at the toughest parts it's not too bullshit hard like i can tell you all that i'm not a great castlevania player i'm also not a great mega man player but i can definitely say that this game is much easier than those at least for me but that's probably just another skill issue for me but i was glad to have finally played through this game for that i had a lot of fun with it but as much as I really enjoyed this game, I still think I like Star Princess just a slight bit more, mainly because I feel like in that game, I don't think I like nitpicked about a couple things as much, and if I did, it was probably like one thing, or in this game, it's like two things. So yeah, I may like Star Princess a bit more consistently by a smidge, but hey, I still think both of these games are worth playing if you do want to experience some Sharp 68000 games. And it's also nice to find another badass mecha game that's just really awesome and does not let you down. So there you have it. That's another Sharp 68000 game that I really like a lot, and it seems like that platform has been treating me quite well. I'm gonna have to cover more of them at some point. So with that being said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day. Tuesday. Now I feel better.